Okay, YouTube. Todd here again. Some guitar guy. First off, thanks for watching. So today I want to talk about this stuff, Harley Davidson Sport Trans Lube. Why it's important to me and my bike, which is a 96 Sporty 883. And I don't know, give you my, what I see is uh, qualifications or whatnot to speak on, to speak on this. And, um, this is this will springboard actually another video to compare sport trans which is now obsolete to formula plus made by or distributed by harley uh which they say is the replacement for this okay so how why am i qualified to speak on this or do a video well i don't know i mean you may you may think i'm not and that's fine too um i think i am but I'm not a chemist, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an engineer, I'm not really an expert on uh, anything, or, or at least much of anything. However, I do have a brain, a uh, pretty good brain. I can read, I can compare uh, deductive and inductive reasoning and all that. And probably most important, um, I've been turning wrenches really since I was a kid under the tutelage of my dad if you want to count you know me changing the oil and servicing the chain and whatnot on my on my uh, dirt bikes and then on into adulthood really because of necessity um but i uh did maintenance and uh minor repairs my dad did too uh we just really could not afford to uh you know take cars to the uh to a mechanic every time something needed doing which some folks do, and that's fine. I would encourage you to learn. Uh, it's not a, you know, some holy grail type thing. Anybody can turn a wrench. Um, but anyway, and I've been doing that for a long time. He, further, he was of the opinion, and he passed that on to me. And I've actually tested that more times than I should have or care to admit. Um, that you really cannot beat OEM. You really can't for performance, for and for value. Really, uh, the aftermarket stuff is just inferior, and you'll end up. It'll end up breaking. I've tested that too many times, uh, or just not working quite as well as OEM, and that includes fluids and lubes. I mean, this stuff, whatever you know, it's called special formula. Yeah, that's kind of marketing, but it's also accurate. Uh, this stuff was manufactured to work with Harley Sporties. Uh, we'll take a look at the back of the bottle here. From 70, for decades. I mean, this was the factory fill and the only recommended lubricant from Sporties for 71 to 93. And if you don't know the Harley line, Sporties are the only ones that combine or uh, that the, the gearbox and primary actually share the same lubricant. Now the engine's separate, but the bigger girls, the big twins have, have uh, sumps for each. There's a separate sump for the gearbox, for the primary, and of course the engine. So, what makes this stuff special, quote unquote, or what's in it? Well, of course, Harley's not going to tell you that. There's um, there's no API or SAE or ILSAC or GL or any of that stuff ratings on here. And I don't know that it would test out to meet. Well, you would you could test out the SAE and get the viscosity, but they're not going to tell you that because yes, they want you to buy this so they can make a little bit more money. But the reason <clears throat> Further, the reason it's important on my bike, it was the factory fill, but you see the copyright down here, 2003, it's also been obsolete since then. So you can still find it. I actually did manage to find a couple of quarts on eBay. The price per quart is fine. What kills you is the shipping. So, yeah, I mean, my bike needs... Um, you know it needs serviced it's right at and i actually have tried a couple and that'll i'll you know kind of 
lead that off a little bit into the next video. People use about, if it comes in a bottle that looks like this, somebody has tried it in a, in a sports store or one of the other, one of the, one of her sisters, but, uh, what's the best option? And I still come back to this. That's my, I'll go ahead and give you the punchline on it. it it's sports trends. Uh, it's going to work the best. So when in doubt, read the instructions, right? And you're probably not like me, but I actually do read these cover to cover. Now this is for a 98 model. Uh, I found online free mine's a 96, but it's the same, uh, the same info. So page 150. Yeah. Very clear and concise language. <clears throat> Use only sport trans and they give you the part, uh, the part number for all operating temperatures. Uh, now this, I do want to take a little time and talk about capacity is 32 ounces. Now note, they do not say just dump a quart of, uh, of sport trans into the, uh, into the system. The next paragraph, they kind of convolute that. Now I read it, you know, and take it. Oh, okay. That's, that's easy. I just dump a quart in and even reading further, I took that, you know, the same way. Um, but they tell you the last sentence of the next paragraph to determine the correct level proceed as follows. And they reference this figure, which is on the previous page. So here it is, and this is for the big girls and the sporties. You have to pull the uh, clutch cover off, stand the bike upright and level, and actually look down in here, which is kind of hard to see, but look down in here and see where that level is. And if it's, and I would say, if you get nothing else out of this video, understand the importance of this uh, a and then <clears throat> b i would consider this the drop dead full no absolutely no more than this um and i think it'll now you don't want to go too low obviously and you know like be way down here where the chain's not you know getting any lubricant at all um <clears throat> but i think probably maybe even around here is probably ideal because as heat builds up, of course, uh, liquids expand and the level is going to rise. Uh, now I made that mistake and dumped in, well, let me, even before I get to that, when I bought the bike, I have a video on the uh, transmission, um, uh, the primary leak, which was caused by tra the transmission vent being blocked by a dirt dauber nest. And what it was doing, uh, even on a two or three mile ride, that was enough heat to build up pressure inside and to vent itself, it found the path of least resistance was to force lubricant up. This is where the clutch cable comes in, up the clutch cable, about halfway to the clutch lever itself where the adjuster uh, is and primary fluid was leaking out. Now it wasn't a ton and you, you know, you see a, you know, a couple of drops on the, uh, you know, on the asphalt, it, it looks like a lot more than it is, but you know, I was kind of, you know, not having any idea how long it's been leaking or what that level is. I'm like, Oh God, you know, I got it. So I did, that was the first thing I fixed. Um, and then I dumped in a quart of actually, uh, 30 weight non-detergent oil and I don't think it was the lube I think it was the level so I did not pull the clutch cover off and look but I'm positive my level was way too high on that and that's when the the clutch and shifting problems started uh, the clutch never never slipped it always uh, worked engaged and disengaged fine but it was extremely grabby, almost impossible for a smooth release from the start. Um, made the, uh, like the first gear clunk, you know, where the bike, you know, the really noticeable clunk and the bike actually lurches a bit forward. And the, the worst thing I guess is when, uh, I got it up to temperature, 
she did not want to downshift. I mean, you basically had to double clutch and reverse to downshift. The, 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 the gears would just bond. You had to kind of blip the clutch to relieve that tension to get down the fourth, third, so on and so forth. So yes, check this level and if you, and also I did measure how much came out and it was about 23 ounces came out. And I'm like, oh my God, it's, you know, because in this, which I also found online free, uh, the, the uh, service manual for 86 to 83 models, I did not blow this up, so it's a little hard to read, but you know, the capacity is 32 ounces as the owner's manual says. So I'm kind of freaking like, oh my God, it's a third of a quart low, you know, it's probably, you know, but it, I don't think it was. And interestingly, the generation before, of course, that takes in the first year of the uh, Evo engine, and I believe the debut of the same transmission, the five speed, the capacity was only 24 ounces. So, for whatever reason, in 93, they upped that capacity to 32 ounces. Now, I don't know if that's anything actually changed in those. Uh, components either the primary or the uh, the gearbox or if Harley's just kind of experimenting around and maybe they thought this was a little low and this should be higher and interestingly enough the next generation the A4 and, and above dropped the capacity back to 28 ounces so yeah uh, I don't know the only way to really know is back to this is to stand it up, uh, pull off the cape, uh, pull off the cover, and look. So, um, I didn't blow that table four up, but I did blow table five up because, kind of given substance to the uh, to the recommendation. So here, yeah, in the service manual, sport trans or equivalent, which I think is funny they they say equivalent because they don't tell you what an equivalent is. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know, read the directions. So I'm going to close with a couple of articles I found to this one off of Wiki to explain what happened. You know, Sport Trans is so great. Why they quit making it, right? That was, uh, you know, a natural question. Well, it's because of the additives. And, now, and I wouldn't know this without having done uh, an oil analysis, but Sport Trans... In its day, it was probably just an average lubricant, uh, basically a 30 weight with zinc, phosphorus, and calcium. And we'll get into the oil report in the next video. But it used, uh, Harley used zinc and phosphorus. These combined to make a compound called zinc dithiophosphate, which uh, commonly known as ZDDP. So, and this was used for decades, long before 1971, probably dating back to the 40s and certainly the 50s, as the industry standard <coughs> anti-wear agent, period. Cars, tractors, trucks, motorcycles, anything. Anything that used any kind of lubricant for anywhere wear got uh, a fair amount of zinc and a fair amount of phosphate just uh, for anywhere, kind of like gasoline with lead and phosphorus. Phosphorus was, a, was a, I didn't know this until reading this article, but was also an anti-wear um, additive in gasoline. Problem was, 1975, the government mandated catalytic converters, right? And the automotive industry in, noticed and researched that not only lead, not only was lead causing uh, health problems, um, phosphorus was causing catalytic converter problems. So they were expensive, uh, you know, mechanisms to help us breathe better. Um, the anti-wear additive was actually uh, destroying or at least reducing your efficiency. <clears throat> so lead was phased out. Phosphorus was phased out both out of gasoline. And then by 04, and I think there was a push uh, as early as the late 80s and on through the 90s to eliminate or limit phosphorus in oils. So in 04, that's when 
that's what happened. And of course, Harley and all the other manufacturers would have, you know, had their, uh, you know, seen the, the, the rotting on the wall and had to adopt, adapt their manufacturing process and basically make harder gears, which they did. Um, now there are exceptions to this 2004 limit uh, to meet API and ILSAC and GF specs and all that kind of stuff like motorcycles, aviation, I think maybe some farm equipment, but uh, what they found, uh, the industry found was that boron is actually cheaper and does a better job than zinc and phosphorus. So ZDDP basically went the way of the dead and bird. Now, and I'll close with this article um, I found on Metatrend. Now this is, you know, this is targeting classic cars, not Harley Davidson's or motorcycles in general. But it does talk about, yeah, what's in there does make a difference. And of course you see a premium brand here <clears throat> pouring into, you don't know what kind of car that is, but um, I don't know. It's really kind of hard to tell. It's in really good shape. But, uh, you know, the Amsoil with zinc and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it really does matter what's in there. And kind of going back to the, you know, the factory fill and what Harley recommends. So, that's all I have for now, guys. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Please remember the YouTube thing. Like, share, comment, all that stuff. And I really do really do love uh, reading the comments and responding to them and getting the you know kind of a conversation going um yeah until next time two wheels down thanks